Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and you're watching The Best JS. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do asynchronous programming with modern JavaScript using ES6 and the new async and await keywords. So, let's jump into it. All right, I've got my text editor open in this file. It's a very simple uh, index.html file. Nothing special here. It's got a header and a script tag. And this is the JavaScript file that we will be using. Um, right now, there's nothing much to it. And in fact, if you open up that index page right now, uh, and refresh it, and you'll see just this. Nothing here. Open your console. So I'm using Google Chrome. Okay, you can go to your developer tools, and we're going to be using the console right here, since this lesson is mainly focused on uh, some new JavaScript features and less so on you know building websites and applications. All right, very good. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to show you some asynchronous programming by making a network request to this endpoint. Uh, this endpoint, if you go to freecodecamp.com, and find their build a camper leaderboard project. Um, you can go to one of their two endpoints right here, and their servers will respond with uh, some information about their users. So in this URL, uh, this is an array of the top 100 campers who have done the most work in the last uh, 30 days. Okay, and that's all you need to know about that. And I've already copied the uh, API address. Uh, right here. So let's get into it. We're going to make a function const copy, or sorry, const fetch campers. It'll be a fat arrow function with no arguments. And we'll put a semicolon right here. We'll write fetch. And this fetch, this uh, is available to most modern browsers. I think all browsers except Internet Explorer supports this method. And if you want to read more information about it, uh, just do a Google search for fetch uh, or go directly to the MDM uh, docs. Uh, but it's basically like using Axios or using uh, jQuery's Ajax method. You're just making a network request to an endpoint somewhere and you are expecting a response back. So it's very easy to use. Here's the string. And this is going to uh, respond uh, asynchronously, so it might take the uh, might the, take the server, you know, um, one second or 300 milliseconds in order to respond. So it it's going to um, it, the way it fetch works is it returns a promise object to us, and then we can get the response uh, and, and view the response from the server. All right, so I'm going to tack on a dot then. This will take a fat arrow function. And this argument response is the response from the server. But it's not really usable until we call the JSON method on the response object. Calling dot JSON is also asynchronous. So we need another dot then. And then we will this console log the results. So this is the response from the server with some JSON. Oops. Let's put the JSON outside. Very nice. Okay, and let's take a look at it. In the browser, let's first invoke the function. And very important to note, because we are storing a fat arrow function in this variable right here, um, we have to invoke it below. If you try to invoke the function above uh, line number three, it's not going to work because these functions will not get hoisted. So make sure that you invoke it below. Save it. We'll come back here. We'll go to the web page and refresh it. And sure enough, in the console, we have our data from the server. This is the response from the server, and this is all of that user data. So if you were building an actual project, now you have all of this data, and if you had uh, Angular or React or jQuery or whatever, you can iterate through this array of user objects and uh, display cards or rows on a table or whatever you want to do uh, for that particular uh, 
for this particular application. All right, now sometimes mistakes can happen, so it's always a good idea. Uh, below your final dot then, you tack on a dot catch. So let's delete the semicolon and let's put on a dot catch error. It will be the uh, argument. And we're just going to log that out. Console.log, there was an error. And this will only run if there was an error with uh, the fetching or with the uh, turning the JSON, uh, the turning the response into JSON. So we're going to save that. And again, all right, no problems. That's good. But let's go ahead and let's uh, yeah, change the URL so um, so it won't work. And if we do it again, there we go. There was an error. Failed to fetch. Um, and it failed to fetch because this is a 404, all right? This doesn't exist, this um, website address. We change it back to the original, and it works all the same. All right, so very simple stuff right here. We have a function called fetch campers, and it is going to make a fetch to this URL. When we get a response from the server, we're going to call .json on it, and the result of that will give us the uh, the data that we want. And both of these things, calling fetch and calling .json, both of those things are asynchronous, which is why we handle it using a .then property. If one of those steps fails, either the fetching or converting it to JSON, then we can catch the errors using uh, using this catch block right here. All right, very good. So now that we have this, I'm going to make a copy of it and just uh, comment, comment this out so we can do some comparing for later on. And we're going to do the same thing. Okay, We're still going to use fetch, and fetch is still going to return a promise object to us. But instead of using dot .then and .catch, we're going to use the new async and await keywords. So essentially, the await keyword will re uh, replace the dot .then uh, uh, properties right here. But in order to use await, you have to use it inside of a function that has the async keyword in front of it. So that's it. So here we go. We have a function. And let's put async in front of it. Perfect. So now we can use the await keyword. And we're going to replace our dot thens with await. So we will say const response equals await fetch base URL. Okay, that's the first one. And the const JSON will equal await response dot JSON. And then once again, we'll just put in a message. This is the response from the server. And then we'll put in our JSON right here. Let's save that. Go back to the browser, refresh the page, and it works all the same. So this is pretty darn cool. Okay, We're still using fetch, and it will still take some finite amount of time for that request to resolve. Maybe the server will take 500 milliseconds, maybe less maybe more time, whatever. But this line of code will not run until this resolves. So once this resolves, it'll be stored in this var uh, variable response, and then we'll go on to the next line. Okay. Again, calling .json on a server response will take some time. So we say await and this line, line number six, will not run until all of this has finished. Okay, so we've pretty much um, shortened this up into um, into you know something that's a bit you know uh, easier to read and and maybe more intuitive to understand. Now the only thing we haven't considered is the dot catch right here. So with async and await, we, we've gotten rid of the dot then and the dot catch. So how can we handle possible errors? Well, that is very simple. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. We're going to use the good old-fashioned try catch block. So 
anything inside of try we will attempt to do. And if anything inside of our try block fails or has an error, it will throw the error to our catch block. There was an error. We will call the error. Oops. Just like that. All right, we'll come back. We'll refresh. That looks good. And if I come back over here and if I mess up the URL and try that again, sure enough, the catch block works. There was an error, failed to fetch. All right, we'll change that back, save it, come back over here, and write us right. Okie dokie. So let's do one review and then I will share some important messages. So again, we are using async and await uh, to replace these dot then and catch blocks right here. You can use await only inside of a function that has the async keyword in front of it. Okay. So if we have an await keyword, then we will not go to the next line until it has finished. So we won't go to line six until we have gotten the server response back from this fetch and it is stored in this variable. Once that's done, we go to line six and we won't go to line seven until we have finished this operation calling .json on the server response. Once that's done and it's stored in the variable, then it will uh, print out the results to the console. If any one of these things fails, well, it will throw the error to this catch block and then we can uh, handle that uh, error and uh, you know, do whatever we want uh, with the error. Okay, we can make it try again, or we can display an error message on the web page, literally anything that you want. Okay, so that was very exciting and actually very simple. It's, it's not that difficult to wrap your head around this, especially if you have already done work with promise objects before. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you still need some help, then I recommend you come to my website, thebestjs.com. Uh, I am a full stack uh, web developer in Austin, Texas, but on nights and weekends, I like to help people accelerate their learning. I offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. So if you're interested, please get in touch with me. Um, you can come uh, directly to the website and there's a contact form and uh, there's um, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, you got links to my Twitter, to my LinkedIn, and also to my YouTube page as well. And I also have some premium courses on a website called Skillshare. And if you use this referral link, then you can get two free months of Skillshare and cancel any time. Um, there's a lot of great classes on Skillshare. I've got a couple of free and premium courses uh, on that platform, and uh, it, it looks quite nice. Lots of JavaScript and React and other types of courses. So if you use my link, you can get it for, uh, for free for two months. Normally it's $10 a month, but with this link, you can get it free for two months. And as long as you cancel your subscription before two months, then your credit card will not be charged. Uh, so I recommend that you put in a reminder in your phone for one month, three weeks, and three days or four days um, to remind you to cancel uh, the subscription, and then you won't be charged. Uh, but actually, Skillshare is really good, so um, I, I don't think you'll be uh, canceling it because uh, there are a lot of helpful courses, including my courses. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.